Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be doing a quick review of the Sony WX50 digital camera. It's capable of taking pictures and recording video at 1080p quality. I read some reviews on the net and I was so impressed with them that uh, we purchased two units, one for my uncle and aunt because they were in line for a new camera because they currently own this big bulky thing which records in horrendous quality and it's time to get with the digital age. And my fiance purchased one for her father for uh, his 50th birthday. We used his unit, he opened it right off the bat, and we discovered some things, pros and cons, that were not listed anywhere on the net, so I decided to do my own review on it. So what I'm going to do is unbox it, go over the pros and cons, and the specs, the features of it, in this video. And if you think that, you know, it's still great, which personally I think is worth every penny, I'm going to include a link at the ending of this video, in which it'll, uh, that video will show you the quality of pictures taken, and videos recorded in various modes, okay? So quick review in this video, uh, specs and features, and the other video will be the actual picture and video quality. So let's get into it. Okay, so get into the unboxing of the unit. Um, there's no safety seals on it, surprisingly. You can just open the flap at the back. I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. Alright, you got a whole bunch of stuff in here. Uh, warranty, advertisement, um more advertisement some sort of Sony feature thing and of course the instruction book of course it comes with a this is the power cord adapter and here you can see this is where actually I'll just show it to you it's much easier um, here's the USB cord there's the port that goes into the camera here's the part that goes into the computer or into the power adapter unit, okay? Uh, wrist strap, which you must attach yourself. Battery. And the camera itself. Okay, one thing about what's listed on the box is that it says HDMI. However, you'll see here it says supplied accessories. HDMI is not included. An HDMI wire, which I think you might need a micro HDMI port to regular size is not included, okay? So you will have to buy that separately. Just thought I'd point that out for you guys. Okay, so starting with the body of the camera, it's a 16.2 megapixel camera. Remember, megapixels did not define a camera if it's good or bad. However, in this case, it is a great camera. Uh, it has an Exmor R CMOS sensor, 5x optical zoom, up to 10x clear image zoom, 25mm wide angle lens, with a 35mm format, a 2.7 inch LCD screen at the back, and the lens is designed by Carl Zies. Uh, the lens itself is exterior based so it expands out. On the left side you have pretty much nothing. On the top you have two uh, ports where it have stereo microphones. That's where the sound is recorded from. You have the on-off button. You have the button in which if you want to take pictures, zoom in and out, which is used for both picture taking and video recording. Uh, you have two holes here, which obviously you can see the wrist strap goes into. Micro uh, HDMI port here. I remember people, brand names of HDMI wires does not make a difference in clarity in picture. Okay, that's just an urban myth. A lot of people get false information. You have a port at the bottom for the tripod connection. Uh, micro USB in which you can connect it to the computer or it's also where you charge it. And here, if you simply unlock you have the SD card and battery. Okay, so you have three modes here. The top, if you turn it, the switch to the top is basically picture taking mode. If you put it to the middle, it's panorama mode. If you flip it to the bottom, it's uh, video recording mode. Now, there is a, you, you can actually turn it to film mode and then press picture taking mode. It won't do anything. See, to start movie, you have to press the movie button. So pressing the movie button while in film mode records, but then in picture mode, if you press the movie button again, it records anyway. I'm not sure what the difference is yet. I haven't had time to play with it. You have a swivel. Hopefully you can see. It allows you to adjust through various uh, preset settings. And of course you have program mode, which you can program your own settings. I'm not going to get into these details too much because this can make this video a minimum half an hour long if we went to every single detail. It's just too much uh, options. Obviously, to view your pictures and video, you press the play button. Okay, and to exit out, you press it again. Uh, while taking a picture, if you press the cat question mark trash can icon button, it'll give you an on-screen guide. It is not touch screen, 
it's all man uh, button operated of course you have a menu button all the options I showed you in the swivel mode by twisting this around are present here at the top okay you have a whole bunch of different settings I'm gonna take a picture of the instruction manual in which it has a uh, list of some of these features I know that sounds pretty funny but there's a big chart on it and you can pause the video there and, and study the picture properly because like I said just make the video too long you can adjust the picture size 4x3 ratio, you also have the option for a 16x9 ratio for widescreen TVs or monitors. And of course you can adjust the actual uh, picture size itself. You have exposure mode to turn it darker or turn it brighter. ISO setting, it ranges from 100 to a massive whoops, 12,800. This camera only records in 1080p format, no matter what. It, there's no 720p at all, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But so what happens is if you're running low in space, everything records in 1080p, but you can just ch change the picture quality down if you're running low in space on your uh, memory card. So it's still 1080p, but you just degrade the quality, so it's a nice little perk there. And of course, you can take pictures while recording a video, uh, although it's limited certain amount of pictures per uh, a video recording segment. And of course you have steady hand and the ga camera guide and you can change the sounds on and off in the menu, blah blah blah. Alright already. Anyway, so pros and cons uh, that were not listed anywhere else on the internet. This camera records an MTS file format for videos. Um, now, it also records in 60 frames per second no matter what, which is nice. However, video programs like VLC does not handle 60 frames per second. VLC caps off at 30 for some odd reason. However, Windows Media Player, which is built in Windows, um, I've tested on X Vista and 7 and Windows 8. I have the preview edition of Windows 8. Play it just fine. You don't need any additional Kodak. Pictures are taken in JPEG, obviously. You cannot take pictures and record video while the camera is being charged. Okay. Once you plug in the uh, wire, whether it be in a computer or into a power outlet, the camera, if you try to record or take pictures, it'll say you can't do that while something's plugged in. So yeah, if you're traveling a lot, you might have to buy a secondary battery. Battery life on the box and in the instruction manual indicates that it's approximately 240 images per battery uh, full charge. I wouldn't trust this at all because it depends on your scenario. Say you're at a hockey game and you're taking a ton of photos, you're going to be clicking pictures really fast, right? Then you're t you have less breaks in between pictures, obviously you're taking more pictures per a battery. However, say you're at a wedding, there's a lot more posed pictures or in a club, you know, people pose. That means in between each camera shot, the battery's on and um, it takes longer for you to take a picture. So yeah, you're going to get less shots in. So I wouldn't trust that too much, but I will put a chart afterwards um, showing you how much battery I was able to use up while recording a video at the highest 1080p setting. The last thing I almost forgot to mention is kind of a pro and a con, in, depending on how your outlook is. Basically, I have a 32 gigabyte card and that handles about 2 hours 20 minutes of recording at maximum uh, quality. Just, that's a lot of film, right? But the, the pro and con is basically like this. If you press the record button and you just let it sit there on a tripod or something, it'll record for 30 minutes straight and then automatically stop. Even though I have an extra two hours of recording time left on my memory card, it'll just stop a half an hour. That's the way they designed this. So some people might be like, that's nonsense, I don't want this. Well, to be honest, a lot of point-and-shoot cameras that take pictures and video have that limitation. In fact, I was close to buying the Canon ELF 310 um, because it was in the same price range. I was getting rave reviews just like this, but I was like, okay, a Canon makes pretty nice cameras. However, that had a limitation of recording at 10 minutes intervals. So yeah, this one records at 30 per segment, the Canon ELF 310 records at a maximum of 10 minutes per segment, which no one mentions on the internet, which I find really frustrating. So the pro is this, in most point-and-shoot cameras, 30 minutes is a lot. Point-and-shoot cameras usually tend to average 10 to 15 minutes. Half an hour for a point-and-shoot camera like this is a long time. And think about it realistically, people. In most uh, video recording segments, you usually record about 5 to 6 minutes per recording, then you stop it, come back, and turn it back on. Right? If you're at a soccer game or a hockey game or a wedding, there's always going to be a time where there's a pause or a break in the function. All you need is one second to stop recording or it'll stop on its own. Press the record button again you start recording right off the bat. You won't miss anything. If you want a camera that utilizes the video footage to, uh, until the battery dies or the memory dies, you need to buy a standalone video camera. Okay? So that's a pro and con. Um, I don't find it as a big deal because I hardly record 
non-stop for an hour straight even if I do like I said there's always a pause in the function or event whatever is happening which I can just press the record button again so I just thought I'd point that out so what I'm gonna do now is actually include a chart with the information like I said which is from the instruction book it gives you a list of uh, all the features and whatnot because I can't spend too much time because this video is already becoming too long so let's do that right now Okay, closing thoughts, so I'll give this camera a 4 out of 5. And the reason being is that it's a great price. Uh, I got it for $220 Canadian. Obviously that could range if possibly there's a sale, it could go down to $200, $200 Canadian rather. Uh, the reason I give it a 4 out of 5 is because like I said, it you can't charge the camera and take pictures and video at the same time. Once it's charging, you can only view taken pictures and recorded videos. So it's a bit of a con there. If you're traveling a lot, you must carry a second battery. Uh, the video limitation is that you can only record in 30 minute intervals. Like I said, that's a lot for a point and shoot camera, but the fact is it still exists. I'm pretty sure if Sony really wanted to, they could have changed the uh, software issue, or uh, settings rather, to get past that. So, it's great camera, 4 out of 5 is a great score, great price, picture quality and video quality is phenomenal. Like I said, I'll show you samples of that at the ending of this video, uh, a link to another video rather. And I'd say it's definitely worth checking out. If you found this video useful, feel free to check out my website in the description below. Hit the like button. It does help. Subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.